Class, welcome back to another video in Chapter 9. Today we are going to focus on rotations. Okay, We already talked about reflections and translations, so we're adding to our list of transformations, and today is all about rotations. Now notice, day 1, that means we're going to do a day 2. This day 1 stuff is going to be more vocabulary, recognizing rotations, uh, and then some or using some nice angles with rotations, and then day 2 we'll work on some tougher stuff. Now, as you can see, I already filled in this blank. I'm sorry about that. I actually goofed up the first time I started to make this video, so I'm going to just kind of continue on, but to start again with the video. So, a rotation is a transformation that turns a figure around a fixed point called the center of rotation. All right. A rotation is a transformation that turns a figure around a fixed point called the center of rotation. The other thing that we need to kind of keep in mind, just like reflections and just like translations, is that a rotation is an isometry. Okay, an isometry. So, the image of a rotated figure is congruent, sorry, congruent to the pre-image. That is important, and you'll see that on the next page, and then also when we get into our next type of transformation in a little bit. All right, so what do we notice here? We notice that we have a pre-image B, and it's being rotated 90 degrees clockwise to B prime. All right, or I can look at my pre-image A, and it's being rotated 120 degrees counter clockwise to A prime, its image. All right, now it's really important for you to understand the idea of clockwise and counterclockwise here, so a lot of the times I'll draw my own arrows, right? This is going this way, so it's clockwise, like a normal clock. This is going the other way, this is going like that. All right, so this is counterclockwise, it's going the opposite of how a clock would go. All right, so we take a look at our learning targets real quick. Uh, we still want to be able to distinguish between our dip different types of transformations. And then really what we're going to do is, can we draw rotations about the origin in a coordinate plane? That's what we're going to work on a lot today. All right, so as we flip over to the next page, this first part is similar to the last video where we need to recognize what type of transformation is occurring. All right, So hopefully we agree when we look at number one, this is definitely a rotation. How do I know? Well, it's being turned, right? I have this piece and it's being turned to this. Or I guess you could go the other way. You could say you have this piece and it's being turned to here. But either way, this is a rotation. And really it's because pre-image is being turned, turned, turned to the image. All right. Now, when we look at number two, this is definitely not a rotation. What's going on here? This one looks to be a reflection. All right. And I know this is a reflection because it's being flipped over a line of reflection. All right, and then I need to draw that line. Maybe dash it, something like that, and we're good. All right, so let me, oops, sorry, I'm off the page a little. There you go. Make sure you, if you need to, you can pause this so you can write those down. Now number three, number three is a little bit different. It looks like it's sliding from here to here, but what's the problem? What's the problem? We said that all of these different transformations are isometries, right? Or congruent. pre-image and image, okay? 
So what's the problem with this picture in number three? Hopefully you, hopefully you guys agree. These are completely different sizes, right? This is smaller, this is bigger. This is not an isometry. This, let's call this the pre-image. This pre-image is not congruent to the image, okay? So this is none, and we can say pre-image is not congruent to the image. All right, I think that's a good explanation. All right, this last one, I don't quite like this picture, so what I want to do, I want you to kind of cross this part off. Okay, I want you to cross this part off. I don't like this because of the lines in the circle and whatnot, so try to forget about that for a second. All right, actually, you know what? I'm just skipping this one in general. I will not give you anything like this. I don't like that picture at all because it's actually kind of two things. It could be a rotation or a reflection. So again, let's not worry about that one for right now. All right, let's jump in to some examples of rotations, okay? Now, the trick here, and one thing you have to be really, or get really good at, is one, being able to list points, okay? So for example, I have point S, and it's over here at negative five comma three. So negative five comma positive three. And V is here at negative four, negative one. So V is negative four, negative one. Now, the trick for all of these, the trick for all of these rotations on a coordinate plane is that you're going to rotate your paper. We're going to have some fun with this. We're going to move our paper around. Now, this says that I can go 100 or that I need to rotate 180 degrees. That means that you can go either 180 clockwise, right? If I go 180 clockwise, that's one turn to the right and a second turn to the right my paper is now 180 degrees rotated from the original and again I went clockwise right a normal what I want you to recognize though here is does it matter if I went clockwise or counter counterclockwise no because what else could I do I could go counterclockwise one counterclockwise two and my paper is still the same way so kind of think about a circle guys it doesn't matter Right, if I'm here, it doesn't matter if I go 180 clockwise or 180 counterclockwise, I still get to the same spot. So, whichever way you want to do it, that's fine. So that's the first step. The next step, guys, is to replot your points. Okay, to replot your points. What I mean by that is now that I have this, or I still have a coordinate plane, I'm going to treat this as my new x and y axis. Okay? going in the correct direction, right? right? Like this is negative x, this is positive x, this is negative y, this is positive y. So it kind of got flipped. So now I'm going to replot the point negative 5 comma 3. And you might have to turn upside down or whatever, but this is negative 5 comma positive 3. So negative 5 comma 3 and negative 4, negative 1. Negative 4, negative 1. Once I have the points plotted, I would turn my paper around and label, okay? This point was S, but remember, it's the image of the pre-image, so I have to put a prime, and this is V prime. So again, the trick here, the steps, turn your paper the correct way, replot the points, and then label. All right? Awesome. Now, this is where, for 2 and 3, this is where it can get a little bit confusing. A little bit confusing. Because I want to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, I actually need to rotate my paper the opposite of what it says. So I need to rotate clockwise. So again, if it helps, maybe put a dot on your paper and understand that clockwise means going like this, right? So I need to turn my paper 90 degrees to the right, okay? Like a clock would go. I now have my paper set up to plot my points. Shoot, I didn't get my points. Let's go back for a second. Let's get our points. So C is at 3 comma 4, and M is at 2 comma negative 2. 
I'm sorry about that, guys. Okay, so now that we have our points, now we're going to rotate our paper. And we plot our points. Okay, C is at 3, comma 4, so here's my origin. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And M is at 2, negative 2, so origin, positive 2, negative 2. There we go. We rotate back to normal, and we label. This was my image of C, so C prime, and this was my image of M, so M prime. What you'll notice here, guys, is this point now moved 90 degrees in a counterclockwise direction. So I know that's goofy that you have to rotate your paper the opposite, but what it does is it ends up moving the point counterclockwise, and that's what we wanted. Okay, so let's try one more. 90 degrees clockwise means I'm going to go counterclockwise when I rotate my paper. So rotate paper counterclockwise. Other things I have to remember this time, get our points before we start turning. So this point Z is at 4, 3. And H is at, what is that, negative 1, negative 5? All right, and now again, because I want to rotate clockwise, I'm going to rotate my paper the opposite, counterclockwise. So that means, if I think about my dot here, now I'm going backwards. So I need to do the same thing with my paper. I'm going to go to the left one turn, 90 degrees. Okay, and now I plot the points again. 4, 3, origin 4, 3, there's 1, and negative 1, negative 5, back 1, down 5. Okay, boom, I label, this was Z prime, this is H prime, and just to kind of check, notice what happened, I went from Z to Z prime, that is going in a clockwise direction, H to H prime, clockwise direction, okay, so that's what we wanted. So really guys, again, the tricks here are to first label your points, or figure out what your points are, sorry, figure out what your points are, turn your paper the, direct, the correct way, replot the points, and then finally label. All right, let's see here. Let's do at least one of these where instead of just points, we have a figure and see what happens, okay? So let's take a look at four. First things first, let's plot what we have. So u is at negative two, zero, so maybe right there r is at negative 3, positive 4, and m is at 2, 2, so 2, comma 2. All right, here's my figure. I noticed some people um, the other day kind of shading in. I actually really like that. I should have done that in my video. Let's shade in so we know exactly what we're looking at, okay? So this is my first figure, and what did I have? This was u, this was r, and this was m. Now, it tells me that I want to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, which means I'm going to do what with my paper? I'm going to have to move my paper the opposite, or clockwise. So again, that's going to be to the right. Think about a clock. A clock ticks like this. Right? Okay, so you're going to want to go clockwise. 90 degrees, or one turn. Okay, now what do we do? we re-plot our points. I'm going to change colors. If you guys don't have colors, maybe do like light and dark or something. Colors would be a good idea though. But again, I re-plot my points. I had u at negative 2, 0, so this is now negative 2, 0 with my new set of axes. And then negative 3, 4, back 3, up 4, and lastly, 2, 2. All right. So now that I have all of that, I'm going to turn back to the correct orientation. I'm going to sketch my figure. I can shade it in if we want. Not necessary. But the last thing we have to do is we have to label our points. This was U prime, right? It was U, now it's U prime. And it went counterclockwise, just like we thought. Here's R. It went counterclockwise over here to R prime. And lastly, M went counterclockwise to M prime. 
All right. I think that should do it. I think that's long enough. Uh, I would strongly encourage you guys to try five on your own, but if you notice on the next page, we have a lot of stuff to practice. So don't worry about it if you do not have time. All right, that should do it. I hope you guys are starting to understand how to complete these rotations on a coordinate plane. I'll see you next time.